Hi, I'm Emily. Before I dive into my story, please like and subscribe for more. It helps a lot. Weddings are supposed to be the epitome of joy and love, a day when two souls intertwine. That's what I believed as I, Emily, along with my family and friends, eagerly prepared for my big day. The excitement in the air was palpable. Laughter and chatter filled the room as we discussed every detail of the wedding. Emily, you're going to be the most stunning bride, my best friend Jenna said, fluffing the veil I held. Her eyes sparkled with genuine happiness for me. My mom chimed in, her voice laced with emotion. I can't believe my little girl is getting married. David is a lucky man. David, my soon-to-be husband, was everything I ever wanted. Kind, loving, and supportive, he was my rock. But as much as I adored him, I couldn't shake off the unease I felt about his mother, Mrs. Peterson. Speaking of the devil, she entered the room, her smile a bit too stretched. Oh, Emily, everything looks lovely, just like I imagined for David's wedding. Her emphasis on David's wedding struck a chord. I forced a smile. Thank you, Mrs. Peterson, we're all excited. As we continued with the preparations, Mrs. Peterson's presence was like a dark cloud. Her comments, though veiled as compliments, often had a barbed edge. You know, Emily, it's traditional in our family for the bride to wear the Peterson family heirloom, this necklace. She held up an antique, somewhat gaudy necklace. I appreciate it, but I already have my grandmother's necklace to wear, I replied, trying to keep the peace. She let out a sigh. I just thought you'd want to honor David's family traditions. The day progressed with more such subtle digs from Mrs. Peterson, but I brushed them off, focusing instead on the love and support around me. My dad, ever the joker, lightened the mood. Remember, Emily, if David ever gives you trouble, you have a home here. Everyone laughed, the tension momentarily broken. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the excitement of the day gave way to a serene night. But as I lay in bed, the joy of the upcoming day was mingled with a sense of foreboding. Little did I know, the storm was just on the horizon. The day dawned bright and clear, a perfect backdrop for what was supposed to be the happiest day of my life. I woke up brimming with excitement, my heart fluttering like a caged bird. Today, I was going to marry David, the love of my life. As I made my way to the bridal suite, my bridesmaids, led by Jenna, were already buzzing around ensuring everything was perfect. You're going to knock David off his feet, Jenna exclaimed, her eyes gleaming with excitement. The morning passed in a whirl of laughter and last-minute touches. But as the clock neared the ceremony time, a sense of panic set in. Emily, your dress, it's not here. Jenna's voice was edged with panic. Confused and alarmed, I rushed to the dressing area, only to find my wedding dress missing. In its place was a note from Mrs. Peterson. My heart sank as I read the words. A mother knows best for her son. I'll show you how it's done. Racing to the main hall, I was met with a sight that drained the color from my face. There stood Mrs. Peterson, garishly clad in a replica of my wedding dress, her hair styled like mine. The guests were in a state of shock, murmurs of disbelief echoing around the room. What is the meaning of this? I demanded my voice trembling with a mix of anger and disbelief. Mrs. Peterson turned, a twisted smile on her face. I'm just showing you how a real mother cares for her son. You're not fit for David. The room erupted in chaos as my family and friends confronted her. David stood there, speechless, his face a mask of shock and confusion. Mom, what have you done? He finally managed, his voice barely above a whisper. But Mrs. Peterson was far from done. And another thing, Emily. You'll be moving in with us after the wedding. It's what's best for David. I refuse to live under the same roof as you, I shot back, my resolve hardening. This is insane. In response, Mrs. Peterson lashed out, her hand striking my cheek with a force that left the room in stunned silence. The pain was sharp, but the betrayal and humiliation hurt more. Without a second thought, I pulled out my phone and dialed 911. The police arrived within minutes, and the sight that greeted them was one of utter disarray. Amidst tearful guests and a sobbing David, they took Mrs. Peterson into custody. The wedding was halted, the day of joy turning into a nightmare. As the guests dispersed, the reality of what had happened began to sink in. I was supposed to be a bride, but instead, I stood there, a victim of a bizarre and cruel act. 
alone in the now empty hall, with the remnants of a shattered dream around me, I knew one thing for sure. I wouldn't let this be the end of my story. It was time for Emily to take control, to fight back against the toxicity that had invaded her life. This was just the beginning. The aftermath of what should have been my wedding day was a blur of emotions. Anger, disbelief, and a deep sense of betrayal churned within me. But beneath it all, a fierce determination took root. I, Emily, was not going to let Mrs. Peterson's actions define my life. As I sat in my now quiet living room, Jenna came over, her face etched with concern. You okay, Em? That was... crazy. I looked up, my resolve clear in my eyes. I'm going to make sure she pays for this, Jenna. Legally, no one should ever go through what I did. Jenna nodded, her expression turning serious. What's the plan? I need evidence. Concrete proof of her intentions and actions. I began, my mind racing with ideas. Remember how she always bragged about her precious family heirlooms? I bet she's got records or something that could show her true colors. So we set to work. With Jenna's help, I started gathering information. We scoured social media, collected statements from the wedding guests, and even managed to get security footage from the venue. Piece by piece, the puzzle of Mrs. Peterson's deceit came together. Meanwhile, David tried to reach out. He was torn between his mother and me, but I couldn't afford any distractions. This was about justice, not just for me, but for anyone who might become her next victim. The day of the court hearing arrived. Armed with our gathered evidence, I stood tall, ready to face Mrs. Peterson. The courtroom was silent as the evidence was presented. The footage, the testimonies, the paper trail, it was overwhelming. Mrs. Peterson sat there, her usual arrogance replaced with a look of defeat. When given the chance to speak, she started with what seemed like an apology, but I knew better. Emily, I'm... I'm sorry. I never meant for things to go this far. Can't we put this behind us? Her words fell on deaf ears. There's no putting this behind, I said firmly. You made your choices, and now you must face the consequences. The judge, after deliberating, handed down the sentence. Mrs. Peterson was found guilty of assault and other charges. Justice was served. As she was led away, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. This chapter of my life was finally closed. In the weeks that followed, I focused on rebuilding my life. The support of my family and friends was unwavering, and their love helped heal the wounds left by Mrs. Peterson's betrayal. David and I eventually decided to go our separate ways. It was a painful decision, but necessary. We both needed to heal and find our own paths. As for me, I found peace. I started volunteering at a local shelter, helping others who had faced similar trials. Their stories of resilience inspired me, and I found a sense of purpose I never knew I needed. Looking back, I realized that this ordeal had not broken me. Instead, it forged me into someone stronger, someone who stood up against toxicity and came out victorious. Emily's story was not one of a victim, but a survivor. And as I stood there, a smile finally finding its way back to my face, I knew I was ready to face whatever the future held. I had risen from the ashes, ready to write my own destiny. Emily's journey has come to an end, but her story leaves us with a thought-provoking question. Should there be limits to forgiveness, especially when faced with betrayal and manipulation as severe as Emily experienced? What would you have done in her place? Would you have considered reconciliation or stood firm in your decision like Emily did? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your opinions add depth to the conversation, and we'd love to hear what you have to say. And if you enjoyed following Emily's story, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more engaging content. Your support helps us bring more stories like this to life.